Welcome to Devlog 6. I'm Jason, game design and environment artist on Hunters Uprising, and today I'm going to work my way across the map to meet up with our lead and environment artist, John. So as you can tell, we're going to do a little bit of a different Devlog this time, a bit more freeform, and we're going to walk through some of the changes as we've rolled back 90% of the locations that we've worked on previously and redesigned them with everything we've learned over the last six months. First off, as you can see in front of me, we've got some cloth simulation. This really adds a bit of interactability and life to any scene in the game. We are working on ropes and chains and things like that as well, but the cloth is the one closest to finished. And these are located all around our map. And we've opened up our map a little bit more for our testers. So we've got the full one kilometer map that is about 40% done in regards to the points of interest. So we're at the bunker that you've seen previously in footage. Oh, God. I didn't mean for that. I forgot there was AI. Uh, I did say it was a bit more of a freeform devlog. I don't know where he's gone. There he is. What a shot. Right. I need to go and heal. Uh, med kit. Nope, that's a drink. Woo! Okay. Well, after that scare, I'm going to try and make my way through the woods and uh, try and meet up with John down near the residential area. We've got some temporary bird sounds in this map. It's nothing spectacular. It's not plugged into our audio engine just yet in wires. Um, but it's, it's just there to add a bit more ambience and life to the scenes as we roam. Proper sounds will be coming at a later date for that. Environment sounds. We want to have crickets at night as you come through. Or cicadas, you know, that kind of thing. So, oh, there you go. As we speak. Oh, the sun come out. Right, where is he? Where are you? Behind the camp. Oh, I think the zombies were chasing you at some point, were they? They're all up on the hill. Yeah, I think they just traveled around. And they want to reach you. Got him. Hello. Hello. Right, now I'll drop you this stuff and you should be able to put them in your backpack. Oh, you bet. Finally. <laughs> nice, we can see. We got accelerated day night for testing, yeah. so it's gone dark again. Oh, behind you. Oh, shit. He's hungry. He's dead. So this is a residential people might recognize from our previous sneak peek screenshots and devlog. Yeah. It's totally been stripped back about 90% and redesigned for a more realistic US residential suburb kind of look. I'm just going to cut in here quickly with the residential section of this video. We finally got our hands on the assets we wanted, which were the prop house assets. You can see these in AAA games like Alan Wake 2. Uh, maybe they're too good for us, but we've got our hands on them anyway. Uh, so check out prop house's assets. They are amazing. They're some of the top, top assets you can get on the Unreal Marketplace. And we finally got our hands on these houses. So I'm really looking forward to getting these houses in for people to see. So, yeah, just a little clip. These are the ones on the left with the American flag hanging off them. They need a lot of customizations and things, but this is them in our world with a bit of dirt layer on the top with the Vertex Paint tool, which is really cool. And, uh, yeah, uh, I'm just going to carry on the video after the residential because uh, I'm still going to be working on it. So you'll see more changes later on, but enjoy the video. So we've got some new vehicles here. We've been slowly rolling out and swapping out the assets we were originally using uh, because there were some issues we found previously with performance and things with those. Uh, so we've got some new vehicles rolling in and Rabbit. John has been redoing all of the paintwork on these as they were all sparkling new. And you can see they've got rust on them and marks and shattered glass and things. Really cool details. He's been painting by hand on these, which is really cool. What was the software you were using for this? 
Yeah, it's called Substance Painter actually, it's from uh, Adobe again, like it's a professional program that's used for texturing of basically any object. So yeah, I was learning with it actually and it was quite a lot of fun. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, you can only get like shiny new vehicles, but you want apocalyptic rusty vehicles, yeah. so you can really make them your own. So, this is what Rabbit's been working on. Very busy. Let me go third person quick and we do a little flyby. So we can see it's had a total redesign. The skyscraper's gone from earlier on. We're probably going to add something to replace that in that empty space there at some point. Uh, again, it was massive performance bottleneck in the downtown. And uh, yeah, we're getting, what was we, 15 FPS before on my machine. And yeah. I'll show you the FPS we're now we're getting. Yeah, granted, we've not done a grime pass, so there's no debris and, you know, dirt and things everywhere at the moment. It's very clean roads right now. Uh, unlike the residential, which was uh, very dirty on the streets and loads of sticks and leaves. This is still clean at the moment. There's a lot of work to be done here. So Rabbit's been extremely busy, but we've got loads of different builders. We can show you what we're, what we're going to be working on here. Right, let me get back in first person with you. So take us on a tour. Show me what you've been working on. Yeah, so basically I was adding now the new grass system. So we will have a high grass with the overgrown, you know, so we have much more like nature look after the 10 years from the apocalypse when you think about it. But I basically scraped 90% of the city. As you can see, everything went to the trash basically. And I'm starting from the scratch. Um, this is basically just the beginning of the work. Uh, you can see basically from in front of us there is a gas station. So from there everything is almost finished. There is a big store that's finished. Uh, there is new houses here actually. As you can see we are walking around them. Everything will be again enterable so players will be able to have quite a lot of fun here actually. There is even an entry point to the metro underground. So yeah, like the city is getting basically 99% read and work. Yeah, I think there is quite a lot actually to do and like even the optimization is very important. I think we are somewhere entirely else than when we were before actually. It was much forcer. Uh, sorry, Jason. No. Yeah. Oh, he was he sneaking? Eat. Was he sneaking yeah, on he us? Yeah, he was sneaking on us. Uh, but yeah, like... Um, basically, this area of the store and like the overground stuff here and the police station, we can see... Uh, this is basically finished part of the map that I'm now preparing. And I think it gives a really nice idea how the whole city will look in the end. Yeah, finished as in the it's got the kind of design out for the assets that are around, like the sandbags here. Of course, the vehicles then final and stuff. It's just the buildings have been redone. But if you go inside here, you can see a kind of layout. You got some zombies in here to give you an idea. Oh, the big boy's coming! Oh shit! Again, I no, don't like him. <laughs> yeah, no dirt pass yet, so there's no grime and leaves and debris on the floor. You got a couple of little things, but if it stood so much, oh my god, I couldn't shoot the head. Imagine as well when we've got our random loot spawn system, and there's there's going to be able to find loot on the shelves, a bit of food maybe. Yeah, there's an introduction to it. Like here, you will be able to find the food in the aisles like this. And of course, we got the rain as well running down the glass, which is an awesome effect. But anyway. It's really important that we have the silencers now because everyone would be swarming at us without the silencers. Oh yeah, if we, uh, what we'll show, we'll show, we'll sneak up behind some zombies next time we see them and I'll fire the AK. And we'll see all the zombies turn around. Of course the yeah. zombies aren't final yet, they are very much work in progress. We can go through here. Either way. Oh. <gasps> oh, have you added the cloth? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It needs to be a little heavier, of course. Yeah. That, like, it's a really nice touch, though. I love that we've got the cloth simulation in. It's so good. 
Oh, oh yeah, show the light through the uh, your flashlight. So imagine you're looting in this garage here and somebody shines the flashlight through the cloth. Look at that. Oh my god. You're like, oh, oh, let's get that. Oh no, somebody's coming. The flashlight. There are, of course, like even intentional details like this guy here. <laughs> oh yeah, poor fella. He never did get those wheels on. Yeah, like he probably had a very, very bad day. But you know, this is the part uh, that I was saying about the story. We want all basically locations to tell a story actually. To have something that will tell you what happened there. And we've got a set number of corpses that you've made in uh, position in the mesh yeah. of the skeleton. So we can place these about and add a blood splatter to the ground and walls. And add like uh, something's gone down kind of situation. Like a bandit maybe got shot here or could be an old survivor or an ex-military member that, that was inside the zone. And yeah, it just adds a lot more like history to the map and lore. And pretty cool little details. Something that a feast on these bones. Oh yeah. Maybe a werewolf or a oh, Maybe. Should we go back down the other end and show some of the other buildings you're going to be working on? Yeah, we can. Uh, right now I will be moving to this part of the map, so I will be working on this. This will be basically like a city center. It will be a main hall, you could say. I think it will be a really interesting building because it's really huge. Yeah. Be, like quite a lot of rooms to walk through and find different stuff actually. You could even have some kind of law, town law or map law kind of thing in the town hall. Yeah, could exactly. Cool. Uh, next I will be working on this part, of course, which is like, uh, you know, the basically apartment buildings and some restaurants. Uh, Astro Planet Arcade, so you will be able to go and see like, you know, some old stuff and retro games actually. And as you can see, this is just, you know, just you could say like placeholders like i have placed the buildings here just to see some yeah. overall look but i will be adding much more buildings here much more details of course the same as in the mall and it will lead exactly to the wall actually yeah just imagine a lot more barricades cars wrecked yeah. cars a lot more debris on the ground rubbish and stuff that's built up and probably have some fires placed about yeah. that will be burning and loads of audio as well audio is gonna be a massive key which our audio engineers are working on be yeah, awesome it's to get some ambient audio going it's actually gonna be the biggest location in the map of course you can see how huge the city actually is yeah it, it, it's, it's huge and I love the size of it and the scale of just this area is gonna take 45 minute match time you're gonna you're gonna spend a lot of time in this downtown we've also got the foundations in for our smoke flash and hand grenades I'll throw a smoke grenade down here. It's very basic at the moment. That's not the final effect, uh, but it is dynamic and shouldn't go through walls. Should follow a, a wall mesh around, go under any holes, but not actually go through the wall. We have our frag grenades. If we press and hold G, we can get an arc to kind of see where we're throwing it. This is mostly for debug, uh, but we, we can just not press it and then left click and throw. And then we have our flash grenade, which I will uh, demonstrate on myself. Hey, whoa, I'm blind. I do like the effect that is in there at the moment. I prefer that to a blind and white. It kind of freezes the picture that you're looking at and kind of makes it a bit blurry in that. Like uh, you'd imagine a real flashbang would kind of do and kind of freezes that picture onto your eyes kind of effect. And the last thing is our extraction. We have kind of a semi full gameplay loop in. We can extract and you can go back to the safe zone. Your loot does matter. If you die, you will lose all your loot in this map now, in our current build. And uh, yeah, you can you can stash in your safe house. So I'll demonstrate that quickly. If I go in here is where our extracts should be located. We've got our nice timer that was put together by our audio engineers. 
more tense the closer it gets to extracting. And you're going back to the safe house. Once you load to the safe house, you'll be presented with the menu again. We can press space, at least in this current build, safe house, and we spawn in the safe house itself. With the loot we have, we can run to our craft weapon station and stash, and we can place items. This is items I've looted previously to test and put in there, so I've got a couple of grenades. So I've used some, so I might drag some out again from my stash and then the next time I go in to extraction that these uh, this loot will be on my character I can of course stash these go in bare naked and loot again and, and create a uh, stockpile of loot and to go back to extraction for some pvp it's as simple as going to this laptop here and going to find game this is just set up for our private testing at the moment and that is the next big milestone we'll be getting a proper matchmaking squad system in which our engineer Danny is busy working on as we speak and then a proper loot system so loot will be dynamic random around the map each time and uh, we can actually get some proper live extraction pvp matches on the go of course this laptop is now working and interactable with so we can use this and change it about for our objective based extraction laptop interactions like unlocking a secure door or gaining access codes for another door which was something we prototyped at the very start of our development cycle and that's it for devlog number six i hope you enjoyed this different format for the devlogs a little bit more of a freeform multiplayer build walkthrough but let us know your thoughts in the comment section below don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to continue seeing the content i create wishlist our game on steam right now most of all thank you for watching and i'll see you peeps next time